Hello everybody, I'm SJM. Welcome back to Prominence Voids Invasion. Today I'm starting off here in the little building I built. Took the most of the playtime that I did yesterday off and just uh, worked on this simple little building because we're not going to be spending a lot of time here and there's not a lot of machines and automation to do so I thought something small would be just fine for our purposes. It's right up here by this tower so I can actually repurpose that for something else if we do need to uh, extend it out. I, uh, I left a oak tree, maple tree here in the uh, within the build itself which I thought was a little bit interesting but uh, the most interesting thing is it leads straight down into where I have a big cave to go do mining if I need resources. Don't need to look there. This is just the front of it. It's uh, just a big, basically a big square building and a uh, hollow in the middle where I'll set up all of my chests here and then we'll move into Tom's simple storage and I'll just have my entire inventory system accessible through that little hole there and we've got all of this guts in here for working out the bulky wiring from that mod to power any machines we want we could just set up kind of along the along the outsides around here if that's uh, something that I find that I need. You see that I'm not taking any fall damage here. Let's uh, demonstrate that a little bit better. Because um, after we finished off at that mushroom uh, place with the, uh, with the piglins, that was way up here, wasn't it? I noticed this little thing on the map and it turned out that that's a, uh, it's like a jungle temple, only it's made of wood and it was in a redwood biome. Um, and that small little structure there was a hundred times more profitable than everything I got out of this area. I did get up into the little room in the top area. There's um, the main area and then you have to go out one of the windows and climb up a little bit to get into the top area and the I did find a trinket in there, which was a pair of kitty slippers. If you don't know what kitty slippers do, they uh, prevent creepers from exploding when close by you. Uh, but then I went to that um, forest temple, I'll just call it, uh, because I found a similar structure in the ocean as well, which is which is I call an ocean temple, but uh, that's different than the than the underwater temple that the all of the guardians from like from vanilla is but it gets awkward naming those things when you don't know what the structures are actually supposed to be called uh, but then in that uh, jungle temple I also found myself the bunny hoppers which with the way I'm set up here with the um, sash giving me the plus one jump height so this gives me another plus one jump height so I now jump three tall and immunity to fall damage, so no deaths like I had at the mushroom before. Uh, as it turned out, I had clicked on one of the beds inside the big mushroom, so I didn't even have to do a death run. I was right there, and I actually maintained all of my levels because I guess this pack changed that. You don't lose all of your levels on death, so that was super nice to find out as well. And then after I finished up in that area there, I did a couple more hours off uh, off camera doing a bunch of exploring. I didn't look at this over here because I think this is in the sky and this underneath it looks like a ruined village so I never bothered going over there. I just kind of swam along the shoreline here, found little bits and bobs here and there. Uh, but I did end up finding like five or six diamonds in this little guy over here. This turned out just to be a pillager outpost which had a 
It's like an illusioner type guy. And he had this totem of illusion. I have no idea what it's do what it does, but I'm wearing it for now. And yeah, just a bunch of bits and bobs I found swimming around up here. I found an underwater village, like an actual village underwater. It was just inhabited. It's not like a underwater ruins, but it was inhabited by a bunch of drowns, but nothing really special in that little place there. Um, ended up having to really pare down my inventory by the end of it all. Uh, this is a ship that's full of uh, pillagers at night, but there was nothing there in the day when I went by it, but I ended up finding a, uh, a um, buried treasure, right? So I ended up having to come back here, and then when I went by there again at night, there was things there. And then eventually I uh, just had to make my way back home because I got full up on stuff. Came back, sorted it all out, and then did my little building here. Basically growing trees to get the wood I needed for it. Cooking up cobblestone, dug out some cobblestone, and built all that. It was uh, This building's just made of uh, cobbles... Of... Um, Stone tiles, which you just make in the stone cutter there with cooked stone. Today, uh, we are going to start looking at um, getting into the uh, spells. So we'll need this spell binding table. And as I mentioned before, I need to do a refund. Oh, they were added in that. That's nice. Points left too. So remember last time I just took all these points just to just to spend some and something in this pack is making sugarcane grow as high as you could ever want it to go. So I don't know exactly what's doing it, but I need a little bit of it for right now. And I don't need to plant anymore because I've got more sugarcane there than I'll ever know what to do with, I think. Uh, but to make the uh, reef to refund our points, we're going to need to make one of these knowledge scrolls. Really simple recipe: just four sticks, three paper, and an ink sack. And, uh, four sticks. And if I'm not mistaken, we just grab one of these guys. Blink. And now I've got 10 points left. I can go into doing whatever I want to do. I think with this, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I got lots of points to get to the, the keystone there. And we'll be able to fill it out with a couple of bits of extra arcane power here and there. And I think I'm coming back down this way to pick up these guys over here for arcane power. And then probably down this way for the health. So that's my plan for the tree, uh, but we'll see about all of that in just a couple of minutes. So this spellbinding table is not hard to make at all. Just remember to put the space in there when you're looking for it in REI. It's just three polished diorite, a couple of amethyst shards, gold, and a book. And then we just put a book in, oh, wait, before we get into this, there's another thing we needed to, with those 44 levels that I have, it's not a lot, so I want to try and minimize any of the waste of experience, because you never know how some of the mods treat um, your experience. Some of them are smart about it, and others, like the vanilla enchanting table, are really dumb about using your experience. So. I'll always try and find a way to store my experience and only use as much as I need to do any one particular thing. So just looking through REI, the only thing I found in here that looks like it stores experience is these experience pouches. So the super experience pouch is a little bit pricey for what I got going on here, but we'll see. 
Um, oh, I needed five pieces of leather. I only picked up four, so get that fifth one. We'll make this. I haven't used this mod before, but if it does what I think it does, yep, you just right-click on it. Oh, so this isn't going to hold squat barely one level at level. And the super ones only hold double that. Interesting. Wonder if there's something else we could do. Yeah, so just typing this in here should show us anything with experience in in anywhere in the text. It doesn't have to be called experience pouch or ancient ancient knowledge. It just has to have experience somewhere. So I don't think there's any other way to store experience in this for right now, unless it's in one of the tech mods. Maybe there's a a mob grinding type of thing that I'm not seeing. So that's a lot more expensive than I wanted it to be. 48. Do I want to spend 36 of my 48 on blocks of lapis? Not to make that, I'd just probably rather make another one of those. We'll just make one, of, one more just for giggles, I guess. That brought us down to 42. Anyways, let's find out how this mod reacts with um, experience, I guess. So we're going to put a book in here, and it's going to give us all of the different um, schools of magic. And it looks like we need three, or it will use three levels of experience. And the one I'm going for is Arcane Techniques. I'll put a link to the um, guide that was done by Luna Pixel Studios, who's actually the mod pack um, team. So one of the guys, or one of the people from their team, actually did a, uh, a how to magic thing. So I'm basically just following along with that and hopefully maybe learning a little bit as we go through here as well. So. Now that I have got the Arcane Techniques uh, spell book, looks like I have to use the spell binding table to add spells. So I right clicked it and it ended up in here. Okay. And it used up, looks like it, it was smart about how much it used. Because I went from like 42 and a half to just a little bit less than 41. So it didn't use up very much XP at all. And of course my bed is way up here. Let's uh, avoid any distractions while we're doing this. Learning and figuring out. So the other thing that we do need to do is to uh, keybind the spell slots. And this weapon that I have on doesn't utilize spells, but this is the one that I wanted to use because it's got an innate plus two arcane spell power. We're going to be going down the, that spell tree I kind of want to be using it. So this is I believe just like the pure magic user type weapon. Right, so... I have to add spells in here and we see that we can't because we're going to need bookshelves. Actually, no, do we just need lapis? Yes, we just need lapis. But 
these two being blank, I believe we need bookshelves around this guy. Um, there is a mod in here which adds like the apotheosis type extra bookshelves. And we've got things like Eterna and Arcana and Quanta and all those kinds of uh, things in here as well. So there's ways to upgrade and I think you can do like level 100 enchanting in this pack at some point along the way. So that is something to look forward to towards the end game. But just for now, we're going to be doing the standard fifteen. Oh, brutal! No, oh that that one's fine. This one is not. For now we'll have to go back and make another bookshelf. read what the spells do here. Most of the spells seem to be like um, melee based. Like this one has some amethyst projectiles but this is like swimming, swinging our weapon wildly. So yeah, they do all seem to be, and I guess this being like the spell blades and such mod, that this would all be based on uh, weapons. Now let's go with one of these two top ones. Oh, we need... So now we have Amethyst Splash in our book. And I... Did I bind this already? Options, controls, keybinds. No, I did not. So I'm going to have a couple just on my spare mouse buttons. Ah, see, I need an arcane rune to be able to cast some of those. Let's see. Alright, so what's an arcane rune? Let's see, we need an amethyst shard and a piece of cobble. Right, so let's grab all these amethyst shards. That will be something I'm going to have to go look for more of. Cobbles here. Also, there's the achievements page as well, which can kind of give you a hint on where we need to go. Lots of achievements to be done. Obtain all the arcane wizard spells. All right. What did that do? It used a rune. Actually, and then the last thing I meant to do before we got started in this. Oh, 
So we'll need a stone slab and six sticks to build the target dummy so we can test our DPS. So when that's all done, I'll bring you guys back and we'll I'll try and figure out a little bit more of it. So hopefully I've got an explanation when I come back. Well, I think like my experience with most other magic mods, this is not very desirable at all. So with the common arcane orb, I used up two of my runes, which obviously we're going to need to have a huge source of um, amethyst if we're going to be able to do anything with it. But to cast the spells, we need arcane runes, and it's this little cube thing is completely useless on its own, right? 1.38. This fire spell blade has an, an innate spell in it called Fire Flourish, which, you know, spin rapidly, dealing some physical damage plus fire damage. And if we spam that on this dummy here, getting 2.5, 2.6 DPS, something like that, really pathetic, but if we just hold right click, we can get a lot more DPS than that, see we're up to 3 already, and if we just keep holding it we should end up at what, 3.36 or so? don't know why the DPS... Oh, because I'm attacking more than once a second. So that explains why it goes DPS is higher than 3.36. But there we are, we're up to 4. Just swinging the weapon normally, so... I'm at a complete loss as to what to do with the spells in this, uh, in this mod itself. Is there anything else in here that casts spells? So, yeah, the diamond sword was another thing that could cast spells for us. And he's hurting himself on my spike damage that I've got in this Prismarine helmet, which was doing why he was hitting me and getting hurt. Yeah, I guess there's lots to learn there. I don't see it really being effective at this point for me anyways, but maybe we can find a nice spell blade to use with all of that. Or I just have to go digging, caving and looking for that, uh, looking for a geode to uh, be able to power using spells, right? I guess one more thing, let's take this guy. This is a 24 block range which just hits damage on enemies in a line and teleport behind the last one dealing something. Which we'd have to go to here. Nope, don't want that one, I want this one. Plus some additional three to four and a half arcane spell damage. And I wonder, does that tooltip change with? Yes, it does change when you have. So that's kind of neat in itself. I like that. 
And it's going to cost me nine enchantment levels to use to get that one. But it is at least modified by the having the arcane cube in my hand. Whereas if I go to just this bucket, and it's going to say this only does three to four and a half arcane spell damage, but this has got that extra plus two, which changed the uh, amount of damage that we had. And now let's test this other thing out, I guess. Okay, so if I take this one point here, because in here it doesn't tell us how much arcane spell power we get. Just says bonus. So that didn't change anything there. That's still three to four and a half. If we put it on our cube. Let's see. Yes, it did increase. So it looks like there's a percentage increase there, and it did, just didn't affect anything with the other one. So 7.5 to 11.2. This is like a 5%. Oh, that's magic penetration. So neither of those should affect this tooltip. Right. Oh. But if we go here and we pick up like this one for 3%, 6, 9, 12%, so we'll get an extra good little bit of uh, damage boost there. Now it's doing 8.4 to 12.9 arcane spell damage on the Sonic Strike. And this amethyst splash is going up a little bit too. See, this one doesn't require an arcane rune, whereas this one does. Let's pick it up. Oh, I gotta grab my book out of here. Or equip my book. I can cast any spells. So the up one. And the cooldown on that is quite high though. Don't know that I can see an actual DPS on it. 1.22 on the, I'm looking at the purple number. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, and I teleported right into my cows here. How far away does it work? It works that far away. Oh, this far away. Yep. It's the range 24 blocks on the Sonic Strike. And we get 8.4 to 12.9. Let's see about adding in my keystone here. That's a lot more damage. Oh, I have to equip the book. Really hard to tell what kind of weapon we're doing or what kind of damage we're doing there. Um, now let's 
shift it down to three. I wonder if there's a way to rebind where the doesn't appear so. This, this, this. Oh yeah, I wanted to look at BPS in here. 39.3 with the fire spell blade. And yeah, 51 if we have the arcane orb. But it kind of makes more sense to use it with this guy, right? Because then you teleport in and then start smacking away from behind. Anywho, I think I'm just about done exploring that for now. Why does it say the jukebox is empty when I put the overgrown disc in there? Wow, I just lost the two discs. Right, how about this one? Flight of the Bumblebee. Okay, that is Flight of the Bumblebee. Killed one of my cows with my hurricane technique. That's funny. There, Move there. Put these books away. Can do some regular enchanting. Just have to swap out the uh, the table in the middle. And yeah, we'll need to find some amethyst shards, a source of them, to be able to get some runes to use the other spell, but I don't understand the purpose of this, because it is from the Spellblades and such mod itself. But why wouldn't we have, like, ranged-type spells to use with it if everything seems to be, like, melee-based? Maybe there are ranged cold fire lightning spells, possibly. But you'd think there'd be at least one for each of the schools, too. So, I don't know. Anyways, enough enough rambling and contemplating on it. The only way to find out for, for certain would be, I guess, to go check out another YouTube video. But I will link to the official The Mod Pack Makers video so you can go check it out for yourself. Beware, that was a, definitely an earlier version of the pack, so things may have changed since then with a, the pack integration or with the mod itself, so just a fair warning for y'all. Anyways, I appreciate you checking out the episode, and we will see you in the next one.